What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So we got our hands on that baby right there, the Pixel Fold, and we have some more takeaways after a little bit of time to use this baby. And spoiler alert, for a first gen device, this baby is still really, really good. It's Google's first, first foot in the door with a foldable. And you can see by them holding off and going the Apple route by not being the first one jumping in head first into the game, they took cues from a lot of other manufacturers, specifically Samsung, and kind of one-upped it. This design, this form factor, the way that there is no gap in between this, the hinge mechanism, I really, really do like this. You're probably gonna hear about it and have seen it enough. There is a lot of talk about this baby not sitting 180 degrees and being flush, and it's true. It does not purely lay flat. Yes, you can bend it a little bit, but I don't recommend it necessarily. So when it does sit on a table, it is not perfectly flat. One big call out there, take that for what you want. I don't see it being a hindrance since you're gonna hold this a lot more than you're gonna lay it down on a table, I would imagine, but it is something to be aware of. Beyond that, this form factor that they decided to go with, this passport look, uh, oppo style and all that, I really do like this. I think this is the way that foldable should be and being able to open it into more of a book form, having that look you can see right there is amazing. The borders kind of do blend in over time, you forget about it. The crease is very visible as well, but again, if you've used a foldable before, it disappears in the background and you do not think about it too much. One of the bigger callouts, which has always been a thing with Android on a lot of bigger devices, is how it actually interacts with apps. And unfortunately, as you've probably seen from other reviews, we do have some issues with that. I'm gonna go ahead and launch Twitter, actually, since that's one of our heavily used apps as well. And uh, I just, I don't understand why it looks so bad. So going into it, exterior display looks perfectly fine as you would anticipate. But the moment you open it up to take advantage of that larger screen, look at that guys. It's, you, yeah, you could shift it over by double tapping, but that's not, uh, that is not a good user experience. I'm hoping that Google is going to improve this over time and not hoping that developers are, they're not waiting for them to make these adjustments. I really don't know. I'm kind of speechless just because how useless an app like that is in that mode. And this is not to bash Twitter specifically. It's a ton of other apps, Instagram, etc. So not ideal in that circumstance. But again, you can close it, look at it from your exterior screen if you want. Other apps do look good, specifically Google's own apps. Obviously, they have definitely took time and optimized it. That new weather app alone is really good. It looks great, it's actually very, it draws you in. It's cartoonish, but still fun and definitely still useful as well. One thing I'm very concerned about, and obviously it's still new, we haven't had a full week of usage yet, it hasn't learned our usage patterns, but this battery, it's one of the largest batteries on a foldable, but I don't know how well it's gonna work. Um, after everything was set up and all that, we did turn it always on display on, but it is sipping at the battery. And I use it a lot on the exterior display. Android doesn't even measure that. So I truly don't know how much battery it's using. It's kind of a head scratching move um, and it is draining pretty substantially. Now, I will call it out that there was a day one update available. We are running a new build from what we were when we originally got it. I'm hoping that'll help settle everything out and calm it down, but that's TBD, right? Again, you're buying a product off of how it works right when you get it and the jury's still out on that one. Aside from that, one other thing is if you've never used a foldable or anything, this baby, even compared to an iPhone 14 Pro Max or any other heavier phone, it's a brick. It is definitely heavy. While it might be the same thickness or just a little thicker for having such a large extra, uh, you know, extra interior display, it's definitely something to be considerate of and be conscious of because you're going to notice it right when you hand it off to somebody. First call out that anybody does when you hand it to them, they're going to be like, oh, that's a heavy phone. And it's true. Beyond that, the color pattern, I really do like this porcelain color. Um, for those of you that follow the channel, you guys would know I actually have right back here a porcelain new Pixel tablet as well. So I think it's implemented pretty well. Looking back at it too, I think the, uh, the other black colorway would maybe make it blend in a little better and look good on the back too. But I kind of wanted something a little different, so I went with the white or porcelain, whatever you want to call it. Speakers sound great though, I can tell you that. The way the uh, continuality works when you close it and open the display, the videos just do kind of seamlessly transition between the two. Haven't had any issues there. The 120 hertz refresh rate on these, 
both interior and exterior displays it makes it a pleasure to use. You don't have to worry about getting a lower resolution or lower um, refresh rate on an exterior display if you just want to use it on the closed screen. So that's nice to see as well. Um, I don't like how Google's implemented it, and I know it's for simplicity purposes, but anything you see on your home screen here, you cannot edit separately. It is tied directly into your home screen on the interior display as well. What I mean by that is if you are familiar with how other foldables work, you would know you can have technically two separate home screens, one for the exterior display and one for the interior display. Um, that's not the case here. Again, it's meant for probably simplicity purposes. So if you're a new user to a foldable, you don't have to worry about mixing and matching two separate displays. I think as a power user or people that are probably watching this video, you'd want a little more customization and that's just unfortunately not here yet. Aside from that, this hinge, it really is very fluid. It still sits, as you can see, in multiple different angles, however you want. It's tight, it feels good. You can get a nice little closing sound from it. The snap, the satisfaction is there from that, but yeah. I can't wait. I'm putting my SIM card in it. This is going to be my primary phone. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is going to go to my secondary SIM. Let me know what you guys think. Are you picking one up? I still don't know if I can justify the $1,800 price tag on it yet. Again, to be determined. Cameras, you can definitely see a little bit of a difference as well. It is a downgrade from the Pixel 7 series, um, but we're going to have to do more testing on that. We will probably do a camera comparison video for that as well in the near future. We don't usually do camera comparisons anymore just because every phone for the most part takes decent photos in good daylight um, and even in nighttime for all everything we've been picking up. So yeah, just another call out there. Expect a Pixel experience, but don't expect the best cameras on this Pixel Fold. Let us know in the comments, guys. Are you picking one up? Did you get one? Are you excited? If you got your hands on it, what was your first impressions of this device? Let us know. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.